Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going through my beauty inventory update to reflect the changes that have happened through April and May. So things that I have brought in, things that I have decluttered, things that I have finished up. I've actually got quite a few additions this month and I feel like this is one of those times when it's really interesting to see how the inventory is focused, the figures come from what the products are worth not necessarily what has been paid for them. In terms of the additions that I've actually got, I didn't spend any money at all. So although I've got quite a lot of product worth being added onto my inventory, none of, no money left my bank account for any of these things. Now, if you watched last Sunday's video, which was my April and May budget update, I said I bought the Cult Beauty SPF box in there. That spend came as a beauty replacement spend, so it came out of my budget. But I actually had that delivered to my work, so I haven't actually brought that home to be able to add it to my inventory yet, so I'll need to add that on in June. That's what I've actually spent, and ironically, that's not yet been added on to my inventory, but I didn't spend any money of my own on any of this, so let's get into it and how it all kind of came my way. First of all, I've got a Jo Malone perfume, so this is from the Jo Malone, they've currently got, I think it's a sort of Scottish Highlands themed collection. When my gran and I were going to London, we saw this at the airport, I think she just really liked the idea that it was like a Scottish collection and obviously we are Scottish. So she bought one for herself and very kindly bought one for me as well. So I went for Mallow on the Moor. It's a beautiful violet scent. I think violet's a very sort of Marmite ingredient. You'll love it or hate it. I love it. I love a Parma Violet. I love Guerlain Insolence or Chanel Messia. So if you like those kind of smells, you'll know yourself if you like a violet smell. It's a really pretty, soft, powdery, floral scent. A little bit different for me. I usually like something a bit more sort of punchy and amber and spicy, but if I'm doing a floral, violet and iris tend to be the florals that I like. I've then got three foundation samples that I had to add in. If you watched my vlogmas last year, in one of the videos I was testing out the Guerlain Poirot Gold Matte Foundation. But the sample I had been given was 0N, it was neutral and it was just a little bit too yellow for me and just a touch too warm even though it was neutral. So I got another sample of that in the shade 0C. When I got the sample I was kind of entertaining the idea of possibly asking for a bottle of the foundation for my birthday. My birthday is in July but um, having kind of been looking at the numbers to add these on I definitely need to finish more foundations before I can even think about bringing one in so possibly Christmas um, but I think 0C is the right colour for me so if you are sort of similar shade to myself so I'd be an NW13 or an NW15 in MAC and generally just the sort of pale shade in every other range is pretty much how it goes. If you're in that kind of category eh, zero C in the Poirot Gold Matte if you are an oily skinned person really really beautiful foundation but whilst I was there they gave me samples of zero C and one C in the new foundation from Guerlain which is I can't remember I think it's it's it linked into the terracotta range so it's a sort of summery foundation it's you know a little bit lower coverage a bit more kind of natural looking etc whereas Poirot Gold Matte is a bit more Full coverage, matte finish, you know, it's not trying to look natural on the skin. It looks like you're wearing makeup. So two very different foundations. I have tried this out a few times. I really, really like it in Zero C. Definitely the match for me. So I'm sure I'll manage to finish the other two samples. And, you know, probably only samples at this point are what I will be working out of my collection of foundations because I've got quite a few to use. I definitely want to reduce the collection more before I bring any full sizes in, but I just wanted to get the right shade match and 0C is indeed that but three foundations needed added in over the last two months. I got my Liberty Beauty box so that needed added in. Seated Queen Cream Cleanser. In addition to that I've got a little Davines shampoo, Sunday Riley Good Jeans, a 111 Skin Under Eye Mask and a Votary Sample Sachet. I think there was also a bar of soap in this box but I don't inventory soap I just put it into the bathroom and we just we don't buy more soap until we need it, so I don't really feel like soap needs to be monitored as such. A lot of my additions this month come from this, the Cult Beauty On The Go Travel Edit. This is now sold out, so I'm not going to spend too much time going into it, but this is where the majority of my additions are coming from. These Cult Beauty Edits, so this is kind of similar to the SPF box that I was saying I bought. I think this was 40 something pounds and you get like 200 pounds worth of stuff in it. I actually got this, my gran got me this for my birthday. Obviously it's, as I said, it's sold out. 
um, and they do sell out so fast you know the deal with these so I need to give it back to her but I actually got it and have just added the stuff in now because I thought I can either add it in now or I can add it in in July kind of softens the blow in a way if I've just added it in and then come July it's done and it's there already so I've added that stuff in and that is what the majority I'll put the cut away so you can see the list of what's been added in and what the costs are etc but that is where the majority of the items on this month's or these last two months additions have come from and then the last additions to tell you about arguably the most exciting are from Lisa Eldridge because I actually won an Instagram competition so Lisa did an Instagram competition to win her new cleanser face mist and you got to try her new cleansing quality as well and I was one of the winners so that was really really exciting all in for the months of April and May on makeup I added in five items worth $70.50 skincare I added in 14 items worth $278.29 hair I added in two items worth $37 and for perfume I added in one perfume worth $82 that meant in total I added in a value of $467.79 worth of stuff across all four inventories that was a total of 22 items Now looking at my declutters, so my declutters all come from the makeup declutter video that I very recently posted so I will link that up in the eye if you haven't seen it already. So I decluttered six items worth $145.98. That's everything that I decluttered and if you want to see me making decisions about what to get rid of etc it's in that video so go check it out. I used up three makeup items worth $68.69, two mascaras and a primer. I really like the Laura Mercier hydrating primer actually, I would be tempted to repurchase that. I've got loads of primers so similar to what I was saying about the foundations, it won't be anytime soon but I could definitely see me with a full size of that at some point in the future. Wasn't mad about either of the mascaras, the Chantecai one kind of smudged and just was really underwhelming so that tiny little size was worth $32.89 so the full size is probably worth about $60. There is no way, like it, if that had been a drugstore mascara I wouldn't have liked it. I didn't feel there was much payoff on the lashes at all. It didn't really do much to enhance them, to darken them or to lengthen them. It just kind of coated them but it was very very natural looking. It certainly wasn't a false lash mascara which the name would kind of suggest it should be. Now the Kevna Kwan, I had had that for a really long time. I hadn't opened it until last month but I think it had really dried up in the tube so I used it for a month and just wasn't getting anything out of it but I've heard really good things about those mascaras so I do think that was possibly just down to an age thing so I don't want to kind of don't want to say bad things about the mascara as such I would be willing to give it another shot. For hair I finished five items worth $180.50 so the Espa Pink Hair and Scalp Mud, the Keristas Chronologist Shampoo and Conditioner they were really expensive and I don't think they were anything all that special like I liked them if somebody bought me them again I would happily finish them up but I certainly didn't notice anything wonderful about my hair for the price of them. The shampoo was worth $47 and the conditioner was worth $68. I definitely wouldn't say they were worth the money. I finished up the Aveda dry shampoo which was worth $23.50 and I finished my Davines hairspray which was worth $30. I really liked that hairspray. It was a really, it smelled really good. It was a really fine mist. Would definitely repurchase that at some point in the future. I'm also really pleased because I had two hairsprays. That's me finished one so I'm down to just one in that category and that is basically where I want to be for most of my hair care categories is down to just one especially when it's a functional thing like a hairspray it's performing a function that's not going to be different depending on how I want my hair styled as such so really really pleased that that's got us down to one in that category but I definitely would repurchase that particular hairspray I thought it was a really nice one. Then skincare as always is my main category for my empties so I had 11 skincare empties worth $382.69, two sample sachets worth $2, a little mini of the Sizzly Black Rose Mask that was worth $30 on its own. I have the full size of that mask. That mask is absolute witchcraft in a tube. I don't know how they do it but whatever is wrong with my skin that mask just perks it up and brings it back to life. I really 
that is one of the few products that I would say is really worth the money. Um, for me anyway, obviously worth the money means something different to everybody. That's the kind of item that I really like having the Liberty sign up for, like you know, it just softens the blow. Two moisturisers, the Dermalogica one and the Sunday Riley one. Dermalogica was worth $42, Sunday Riley was worth $22. Probably wouldn't repurchase either of them. They were both fine, but nothing special. I finished quite a few serums. 111 Skin Y Serum Repair. That 10ml size was worth $116.67. And quite frankly, I don't have a new face after using it, so I definitely wouldn't be buying the full size of that at whatever mad price point that would indicate it would be. The Biosan Squalene Vitamin C, worth $8.67. Really like the texture of that, and I am looking for a daytime vitamin C. I feel like just in terms of my budget, as you'll know if you've watched last week's video, I feel like I'm probably going for a drugstore vitamin C, something budget friendly, but if that was less of a consideration, I'd definitely be open to that Biosans one. I thought it was a really, really nice one. Dr. Barbara Sturm Niacinamide Serum, it was three mils. Like I got about three uses out of it. It was fine, but I can't tell you much more about it other than that three mils was worth $14.50. Kiehl's Hydro Plump, I already have a backup of that. I love that. I repurchased that over and over and over again. It hydrates, but as the name suggests, it also just plumps up the skin. It's also ophthalmically tested so I feel really comfortable using it around my eyes. That's one of the areas that I am very aware of fine lines that I want to be plumped up in. That one is worth $78. I already have it again and it's something that I've repurchased for years now and when I'm not using it I notice. So I really really like that Kiehl's Hydro Plump. Then the Summer Friday CC Me Serum, the daytime vitamin C I was using before I finished the Biosans one. That was worth $66 and it was fine but for that size to be worth $66 I kind of want something more than fine I think. Do you know what I mean? Like it was fine. I have no real complaints but when I finished it and moved on to the Biosans one like I didn't notice any difference in my skin so yeah like fine. No complaints but no glowing accolades either. And then cleanser I used up a little mini of the Murad AHA BHA cleanser worth $2.85. That brought me to 11 items worth $382.69 used up for skincare. So in total for April and May for makeup I opened it $14,701.21. I added in $70.50 worth of makeup. I used up $68.69 worth of makeup, so I did add in more than I used, but I decluttered $145.98 worth of makeup. So we definitely went down in makeup. Our new total is $14,557.04. We're getting a reduction. I think the thing with makeup is, with a collection my size, I am never going to be using more than I'm bringing in. I would like it to be on a fairly even keel, and to be fair, like, $70.50 brought in, $68, $69 used up. It's it's in the ballpark, which is, as long as we're in the ballpark, I'm happy with. But I feel like it is most of my makeup reduction is going to need to come through decluttering. So I'm glad we got some declutters in this month. For skincare, so I added in $278.29 worth of skincare, which is so much given I didn't actually spend any money on anything that I've added in, but it is what it is. I used up $382.69 worth of skincare, so we're still going down. Opened at $4,913.62, closes off at $4,809.22. Still got a reduction, that is the main thing. Hair Care opened at $1,390.77. I added in $37 worth of hair care, but I used up $180.50 because mainly that shampoo and conditioner were so expensive. So that's taken my hair care inventory down to $1,247.27. I want to have that down to being under a thousand by the end of the year so I feel like we're closing in on it. I'm feeling really good about that. Lastly, Perfume opened at $4,737.37. Added in $82, didn't use anything up, didn't declutter anything. So that did go up a little bit this month to $4,819.37. But in terms of the overall totals, I added in 46779. I used up 63188 and I decluttered 14598. So as a total, it did go down. It was only perfume that was the exception to the rule. Then in terms of the quantities, makeup, we opened at 600, 
added five, used three, decluttered six, so closing off at 596. For skincare, we opened at 194, added 14, used 11, so we actually used less quantity-wise than we added in, but it was more value that's come out. Hair care, opened at 62 items, added two, used five, ending at 59. Under the 60 mark, so clawed down, feeling good about that. Perfume, opened at 44, added one, didn't use or declutter any, so closing at 45. And that means my total inventory is composed of 897 items at the end of May, and that those values add up all in all to $25,432.90. But that is everything for this video so overall we're going in the right direction we are overall reducing there's been quite a lot of additions this month but that's not going to be the case every month it's just been a kind of a weird one where these two months have spanned competition win a liberty beauty box and an early birthday gift and some samples coming in so there was just quite a chunk that there usually wouldn't be although i do have the spf box to add in in june but Hopefully that one box being added in will be more than cancelled out by the empties for the month, fingers crossed, because at the end of June I need to sit down and look at where I was at the start of the year and do my, like, my six month check in in terms of all the goals that I set myself and how I'm progressing towards them and then set a game plan for the rest of the year. So. Yeah, I feel like I feel like the pressure is on for June. We want empties and I'm also planning quite a few declutters in June. So I've got my NARS lipstick um, declutter video that I've got planned. I want to look through my eye pencils, um, not my eye pencils, like my eye crayons, like stick eyeshadows basically, because I feel like a lot of them have kind of dried up. So they need some attention. And then I'll have just my box makeup declutter, like the last one for the month of June. So I'm really hoping for some good declutters. That's why there's going to be two videos a week in June. You're going to get a video on Wednesdays in addition to my Sunday video every week for this month. So do make sure you check back on Wednesday for whatever the next video will be. I think that might be one of my first declutter videos. Pressure is on to definitely try and get some good reductions in June and be in a healthy place to be kind of assessing where we are versus the start of the year at the end of the next month. So wish me luck with that. Keep your fingers crossed for me. Thank you very much for watching this video and I will see you on Wednesday. Bye.